Hey guys, Henning Morton from Flip Normals. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about mid frequency. So this is something that we covered in a live talk that we had a few months back. We actually recorded it for everyone, but uh, all the references and everything kind of messed up. So we couldn't, so we actually couldn't use that footage. So sadly. take two. <laughs> so take two. <laughs> um, some of these parts we've also covered in the observation video, but this is more specific to mid frequency detail. And mid frequency is also something that we've talked about when we've been teaching. And I think it's like, it's an overarching topic that we keep coming back to just because it's so important, so especially in the beginning stages of starting when you're doing art, if it's painting or sculpting or whatever it is, it's very easy to be distracted by details because details are what we sort of notice first. But with mid frequency, it can be a little harder to decipher what actually, what is mid frequency. So sometimes people tend to skip over that stage, especially if you're just starting out with art. And it is something that you can create a bad habit of doing. So like you can continue doing it for many, many years. And when it comes down to it, the mid frequency is really what makes or breaks, in this case, your sculpt. Yeah, people tend to, first off, just doing the ba the basic anatomy, you know, they're doing the main shapes, the muscles, and then they go straight into pores. When in reality, there's so much variation between these two, like subtle changes in planes, little fatty pads, just really a lot of shapes. So the reason we're showing these sculptures, first off, they're just absolutely gorgeous <laughs> sculptures, but what a uh, boss, <laughs> what a boss, but they they don't have any high frequency. Like there is. There is specificity in them. Like if you look at his beard, it's beautifully sculpted. Yeah. But just by definition in the medium, you can't have the high frequency because, I mean, good luck getting pores into the stone and all that. Yeah. You, you just can't. So what they're doing here is just really focusing on like low and mid frequency, which is, you know, you still have, the, you still have veins, you still have hair, but there is nothing when it comes to like the really high frequency stuff. And these sculptures are... I mean, they're, they're fantastic. Yeah, I mean, the closest we get to high frequency here would be you have something in the beard, his pubes, there's a little fold here on yeah. uh, Prosopina, and then, you know, maybe some veins that could be kind of an indication of higher res detail. But everything else is just low and mid frequency. You know, it's so beautiful. And if you were to slap a texture on top of this, like if you have this in 3D, you know, the texturing would be free. Yeah. It's just because the underlying forms are are so well defined, not in terms of definition, but they're they're thought out. There's there's a there's sort of like there's a lot of thought behind it. Where is it? How does it interact with all the other forms? That just means that whenever you're gonna proceed into texturing, um, any sort of tileable or detailed pore map, whatever you're putting on top, is gonna everything is just gonna look right. Yeah, people want the texture, they tend to uh, put way too much modeling into the texturing. Mm. In reality, or for optimal results, you should just put as much into modeling as you possibly can. If you have, uh, if you know, if you have uh, stuff like veins and all that, don't do that as a texture map. Don't make that a brighter color no. because the veins by themselves wouldn't be brighter. They would just stand out more, so they might have more highlights in them. I see this as one of the main issues people have when they start texturing. They under model it, and now you have to over texture it. <laughs> we'll show you some specific examples in a bit. Again, there was just nothing. You see, like, some stuff, some wrinkles on their fingers and on the toes, and you see some fur and all that. Yeah. But that's just descriptive. They're just hints. Can't express how important it is to not go crazy. If it's good enough for, for these guys, then yeah. it's good enough for you. Like Bernini knew what he was doing, you know, so... Yeah, uh, <laughs> he was serious. Okay. But I think these classical sculptures are really a perfect example of how to do mid-frequency because, you know, you have something like this for the nails. Okay, there we're getting into some nice high detail stuff. But even here with the knuckles, this is just a slight indication of of, of wrinkling, wrinklage, I don't even know if that's a <laughs> word, um, on the knuckles, right? But everything else just supports that. So having that there, now it sort of like, it becomes a focal point because the mid frequency of the other parts of the knuckles and the, the wrist just sort of like, it creates some nice contrast. Whereas if you're just detailing the, the, sh the living shit out of something, um, it can be really hard 
for your eye to sort of find rest and figure out where to actually look. So it serves multiple purposes, but also it's, I think sometimes high frequency is a way for people to try and hide um, their, their bad sculptor. Yeah. If maybe it's, they don't possess the skills yet, or maybe they're just blind to it. I've seen that uh, multiple times where people don't know that they're missing the frequency. You know, they look at it, they ask for feedback. Like I, I, you know, I've been doing this. I've been looking at my reference and I've, I've, I've made what's in my reference. I can't tell what's wrong. The problem is people don't actually look what's in their reference. This is back to the observation video where sometimes when there's a lot of detail in a reference picture, it can be really hard to discern what is, what is the mid frequency? What is the high and low frequency? Yeah, whenever I've been teaching sculpting, that seems to be one of the absolute key issues in, in sculpting. I mean, once you get above the certain uh, level of you can operate ZBrush and, and all that, is is that people, they, they're missing a whole frequency for it. Yeah. You're looking at a sculpt, something isn't right. Yeah, you're missing you're missing a whole frequency. <laughs> you can't just you can't just take a, take that away. Like low frequency is easy, yes. right? Because low frequency is basically the majority of what defines the silhouette in your your whether a character or creature. It's something that everyone can understand. Uh, whether you can make a good silhouette or not, that's a different question. But most people they get the low frequency because yeah. it's so fundamental. And uh, then they think they do mid frequency. But that's that might still be part of the low frequency, and then they jump directly to high frequency afterwards. Because it's also easy to understand. You're looking at the sexy render of something, and it's like all these like X Y C surface mimic maps, yeah. and you get it. You know, you just get that. Of course, that looks super crisp. But how do you explain what's in the middle? Yeah, it must look realistic because he has a lot of pores yeah. and scars. Yeah, not because his muscles are defined and no. like, the anatomy is is good. <laughs> and it is important to have that as well. If you're going for realism, you need that frequency. You need yeah, all yeah. frequencies. We can't say that one is more important than the other. No. But if it comes to you have, let's say you have, you're missing all this mid frequency and low frequency, and and you go straight for pores. The moment you zoom out of the face, and you know you have a you have a long shot or something, a medium shot even, you can't even see it. You can maybe see some subtle breakup or something. Maybe the spec looks a bit more interesting, but basically you you will not be able to see anything at all. Yeah. So you're starting off with you know make sure the long shots are working, the medium shots, and then close ups. If if you uh, if you do close up, if you only focus on the high frequency, close ups going to work, but nothing else. Yeah. If you focus on that, then the super close up, like the close up <laughs> around the mouth, is going to look beautiful with some depth of feel and color grading. It's going to look super tight. But a regular medium shot is going to look just boring yeah. and miss miss all the interest. Yeah, it's and I think mid frequency is one of those. I would say it's hard, but almost say that it's the hardest. Like okay, so so making a good silhouette is obviously super hard. Yeah. But if you're let's say you're working off of a scan or you have like other scan reference, then getting the silhouette down can be pretty straightforward. But then filling in the rest, obviously, if you have a scan, you just project. But <laughs> if you're sculpting from scratch there, then filling in the mid frequency could be really hard because you need to, I mean, you need to practice it. You need to figure out when do I transition from low to mid and when does this not make sense to make in my mid frequency anymore and when do I need to transition into high? Because I, I would say there's like, it's not just black and white when it's low, mid, and high. There's definitely some levels in between mid and high as well. Because you like high res detail, you think about pores, but you can you can have lower high res details <laughs> that aren't quite mid frequency either. That's sort of in between. So maybe a know, small pimple or something. Yeah, yeah. Or... You know, and then there's certain types of wrinkles that that don't really affect the silhouette that much but a little bit okay they could also be high res <laughs> uh, high frequency so so it, it could definitely be be very tricky yeah but i think that all that just comes with more experience and, and sculpting but first of all being aware of it yeah. because like i said i've seen people that have sculpted for years but are still neglecting mid frequency and that's not because they're bad at sculpting that's just that was something that they maybe never observed, they were never told. And then you continue that bad habit of just too early going into high frequency detail and not understanding why your sculpt doesn't look as good as it could. So uh, we've had this example before, our little penis uh, <laughs> turtle. Slightly phallic uh, tortoise. So this is just an example of 
trying to dis dissect the detail levels, right? When you look at it, it, it can be really hard when you just find a picture like this. So we came up with a super ghetto workflow. <laughs> we just take it into Photoshop, uh, color grade so it's black and white and then blur, blurred. Yeah, so basically, <laughs> up to this point, you're asking, all right, guys, so what the hell is mid-frequency? Mid-frequency is basically what you're seeing in this picture. High frequency is in the color one, where you know you have everything. You have all the fine frequency. You have all the subtleties of the breakup and all that kind of stuff. But you aren't going to see that if you blur it, meaning if you are further away than like one meter, yeah. you aren't going to see this at all on the creature, which means they're not that important. Like you see the little, like the little ridges on on each little scale, all the little variation. Yeah, look at all this. Damien standard yeah. for days, you know? <laughs> exactly. Like this stuff here, all the individual, like it's basically a bump map here, yeah. you know, just like a little bit there. You know, don't do this in sculpting, just apply a bump map. Yeah, do the Mari. Tiny little teeth. I never noticed that I had tiny little mm, teeth. Observation, before. there you go. You know, so. And these are important. It's really important to get this in. We're not saying you shouldn't do that. And we don't have a, <laughs> we're not fanboys when it comes to a frequency. <laughs> I wear mid-frequency fanboys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It should be a t-shirt. <laughs> Lamest t-shirt <laughs> ever. But it's more that you got to just do it in different in different levels. So in different steps. So if you go to the next picture, then we can only, then we can see what's there when it comes to, if you take away all the, all the frequency, if you take away all the really fine stuff. So if you were to sculpt this and you're not a, a more veteran sculptor, you're fairly new to sculpting, and if you look at the color one, it's impossible to start sculpting. There is yeah. too much stuff. You blur it, now you can't you can't sculpt them because they don't exist. Like look at this. You have this skin fold right here, which is kind of easy to miss if you're looking at it in the detail view. But as soon as you blur it, you make it black and white to not I mean the black and white thing is just to help your eyes not be distracted really. Yeah. Um, just see how how dominant that is there. You have the wrinkles that go around here. This little sack of something there. Some you know, flesh. <laughs> sack of flesh. <laughs> All of this would be mid frequency because it deforms the the silhouette and the surface so much. It's quite deep actually. Yeah. Um, but. All this little stuff, maybe, you know, this one could be reserved for a little later in the mid-frequency sculpt. And then all of these ones, definitely high frequency. Um, you can see this is this is what they do to the surface. No point in sculpting all these little tiny bumps there. At least not early on. If you, no, I mean, no. there is an argument if you want to sculpt everything seawards because you're a crazy person. I mean, regardless of how you do it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> regardless of how you do it, it's just don't do it early on. Don't no. add any of that until you sculpt this. And one one thing you can do as well, you can sculpt it from you can sculpt it in different uh, with different blur amounts. Yeah, blur this with different blur amounts. So yeah. first you blur it by like fifty pixels, and then you only sculpt that. Then you take the original blur by thirty pixels, sculpt that to to the point where you know you you blur it by nothing, and then you have all of it. I think that's actually a really good way of doing it because then you you don't have to counter your stupid brain no. <laughs> by trying to to take in everything at once. Then you you can't. The interesting thing is, like, when you zoom in like this, everything that was the eye before, you know, all the little Damien standard niceties, they have disappeared. Yeah. All you can make out now is that, okay, there's a shape that goes around there, the eye, and it's a shape right by the eye there. You know, fold there, there's a fold there, and then there's, like, a fold there. As soon as you zoom out, you start to get more of a picture, and if you sort of, like, lean back and you go further away from your screen because I can't actually zoom out more. Hmm. Um, you would be able to sort of like, you kind of see more detail. Then you go back to the the colored one. You're like, oh, okay, there's so much detail mm -hmm. in there. Now we're back to all these little, like, little bumps and stuff, which could just be one sausage shape to begin with. So that's the power of mid-frequency. Mm, it's, it's so important. And then we have a more specific example as well. This is from one of our students when we were in Denmark called Asker, fantastic uh, student, really good sculptor. And this is, uh, this is uh, I took his model into Mari and uh, with all his all his nice sculpt mid frequency. And then I just applied a single bump map onto it, which is tiled. <laughs> yeah. And obviously it needs balancing and all that kind of stuff. And maybe it's too big or too small or whatever, but at least, you know, it, it looks, it looks okay. 
<laughs> and then we go to the one with no mid frequency. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we just smooth out all its mid frequency and just took it away. And now you can see it starts to look very tiled, particularly in the very flat areas. It just, like on its very screen right, it looks just so tiled. Yeah, if you look right here and we go between, you, you definitely, you see the tile pattern. As yeah. soon as you go in here, yeah, you can you can kind of see that there's some tiling going on, but it's, it's a different world. So whenever I've been texturing, this is what I was talking about before. If, if you're texturing this, this is easy to texture. Here you can do a lot of stuff with tiles. You can you can slap them on top and you're you're not done. No. <laughs> There's more stuff to do. <laughs> but you know, you, you still get a really good frequency and you can yeah. do a lot of stuff with tiles. But if you have the other one, which is just flat, I mean good luck texturing this. Like this is <laughs> in order to texture this successfully, if 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 there is no displacement map or anything, yeah. then you're gonna have to add so much shit into the color map. You're gonna have to add so many shadows and like highlights and shadows and everything into it which is going to break every kind of physicality in any shader and it's just gonna, not going not gonna to look very good. It might be one of those things where we I feel like we've had this a lot with our videos where pe people they watch the video and they go like well duh yeah, <laughs> yeah. of course you're not going to not sculpt this I can see the wrinkles <laughs> yeah but uh, trust us yeah it's it's what it's uh, like a hundred percent of the time especially <laughs> when we go out to teach this is what people are missing yeah. every single time. Yeah. Um, it, it sounds obvious once you start talking about it because now all of a sudden your eyes have like been opened. It's like if you don't know the word for orange, you're never going to you know, identify an orange. Yeah. Now everyone tells you what an orange is. Now you're going to start looking for oranges I see, everywhere. I see oranges all over the place. <laughs> exactly. So it's the same thing with mid-frequency. You're going to go out in the street now. And you're just going to stare at people yeah. like, okay, what's the mid-frequency? You're going to love looking at old people. Oh, we we have this as well, with, particularly when it comes to sculpting. When uh, I had this recently where I was talking to somebody who, uh, who she, she was, she'd been starting to get more into sculpting. And suddenly it was like, holy shit, the muscles are deforming the body so much. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't understand. Yeah, but I told you like five months ago. Yeah, but I didn't get it. <laughs> but and that's not because of uh, of, uh, of because you're not a good artist or whatever. It's just because you don't notice it. Yeah. We we, we start off by saying that all right. So first you start off with a skeleton, and then you have muscles, which deforms it. But and they're like, yeah, I know, Henny. Shut up. Yeah. This is so basic. But then you... And then they forget when they start their next sculpt. Yeah, then they start sculpting. And you're like, yeah, you, you got to remember first with the skeleton, then your muscle. And they're like, oh my God, I'm uh, so stupid. Oh, that's what you meant. It weren't just words. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're like, of course, I know the skeleton is under the muscles. Yeah, but you didn't, did you? Yeah, you thought they were part of the muscles. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the same thing with mid-frequency. Now you're going to go back and, and uh, if you would feedback your stuff, you're going to be like, my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We have another example here of um, spot the tiles. Mm. Uh -huh. And uh, we actually had to look at this ourselves for a little bit. Yeah. So if you look right here, right there, that's when it starts to... You can see a seam there. There's a seam right there. It runs all the way up across, which is a lot easier to spot. Yeah. Not a lot. It's a little bit easier to spot here, but we're also very close. Um, that's another thing that mm, the mid frequency can help you sort of hide just because there's a lot of undulation and a lot more variation in the surface. Obviously, most of your maps should probably be real tileables and mm. really good for tiling. Um, but it's just an example of what else mid frequency can help you do, especially when you move into texturing. We were always asked this, so how do you how do you fix seams issues in production? <laughs> and we just like shrug and be like, you hide it in motion blur or you just you just have so much shit on top of it. Yeah, I've seen comments like that as well for like displacement. So what do you what do you do about displacement seams? Yeah, we have displacement seams. Yeah. Yeah, definitely don't look at close-up shots for Pacific Rim 2. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> there are no displacement seams there. Absolutely anywhere. none. Maybe a few. <laughs> yeah, it's actually interesting. That you don't notice. As soon as you, you have a good tileable on top, you have the mid frequency, you add a little bit of high high frequency spice on top, yeah. the, the seams kind of disappear. Yeah, and you look at add some triplaners and yeah. which aren't which will what definition not have seams. Yeah. It's so important. If you go to the next picture as well, we have uh, some we're just showing like, you know, just how shitty the map actually is. This is how it looks pretty decent here. Yeah. And this looks this looks fine. This is a different map. So here it looks good. Here it looks terrible. <laughs> you and really you see the tiling. Yeah, you can really see the tiling, but in it just looks it looks fine. And if you and, but then you're seeing like the absolute <laughs> Yeah. The monstrosity of this map. I mean, it's a good map, mind you. It's just the problem here is just that it's tiled to death. Yeah. 
if I were to do this for actual production or for my own textures, I would uh, I wouldn't do it this extreme. I would I would use a few few different ones. Maybe I would I could even take the same map, rotate it around, and mask it out in a few different places, yeah. and that would work well. But I mean, even just because at a mid frequency, it just it just kind of works. And this is also I mean, this is like a, as a little tangent. This is why you don't sculpt everything by hand in ZBrush. Mm. Um, yes, some people do that. Yeah, some Seaward Cowboys, they really go ham on it. Yeah. Try to sculpt all of this in ZBrush. Uh, first of you need 600 million polys, but let's say you could and you had the two years it took. <laughs> <laughs> and, but now you're like, oh shit, uh, everything is too small. Yeah. You're like, oh man. Uh, I don't want to hear anything about HD geometry. <laughs> no, in, um, in Mari, or paint or whatever you use. If you do this in texturing, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Then you can just change the scale of it. And then, you know, you just have you just have all this nice frequency. Yeah. These maps can be found on Texturing XYC or Surface Mimic. This is this map I believe is from Surface Mimic. And they just they're just adding so much to it. But as you can see, the magic isn't just in the map itself. This is the high frequency. But without a high frequency, oh sorry, without a mid frequency, then you have nothing that really just like there's no point yeah. in that. Yeah, you're gonna struggle so much, and you have to sort of counteract the lack of work in texturing yeah. that you might as well give up. I mean, there's no reason to do it. Yeah, so the difference between just these two pictures is purely mid frequency. We smooth out everything else. Yeah. The high, the high frequency is exactly the same. The low frequency exactly the same. But now you know. Yeah. Now you know the, the magic of sculpting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that 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 just about covers. Everything mid frequency. Well, maybe. Yeah. You, know, you could talk about this for so long. Yeah, we can show examples and, uh, for four hours. Yeah, but there's really no reason. I think the most important thing is like back to the observation video is now you start to go out and you start to observe. You look at maybe go back to some of your previous sculpts, yeah. um, previous paintings, whatever it is, and see if there's mid frequency missing and where can you where can you refine that. And also check out our observation videos as well, yeah. because you, you you probably need to. <laughs> yeah, we have. I think we have two of those now. Yeah, talking about different kinds of observation. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that about covers it. So, if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the notification button, the little bell, because um, YouTube is um, it's being very hard to work with sometimes. Yes. <laughs> so some people aren't getting notified. So make sure to hit that little bell button as well. Yeah. Thanks, guys.